Okay, so in this video, we will prove the absolute convergence test, which says quite simply that if the series of the absolute value of a n converges, then automatically you can drop the absolute value and still have convergence. And so the series of a n without the absolute value converges. And you can see why we use the word absolute convergence. And actually there are two reasons. The first one is because of the absolute value. The second is that this is a stronger form of convergence because the convergence of the series of the terms with the absolute value implies the convergence of the series of the terms without the absolute value. So the absolute value refers to those two aspects, the absolute value itself and the fact that this is a stronger form of convergence than this one. So let's prove this result. The proof, as you're about to see, is surprisingly simple, but a little sneaky. So we'll start with a simple inequality. So we know that any real number is always between its absolute value and the negative of its absolute value. So now let's add, across both inequalities, the absolute value of a n. So we'll obtain 0 is at most a n plus its absolute value, which is at most the absolute value of a n plus itself, therefore twice of the absolute value of a n. And if you look, we now have two non-negative sequences, a n plus its absolute value, twice of the absolute value of a n. So, these terms are smaller than these terms for every n, so if we sum the smaller terms, this must be at most summing the larger terms. But as 2 is a constant with respect to n, we can pull it out of the sum. And now we can make an interesting observation. By assumption, our only assumption is the series of the absolute value of a n converges. This is nothing but a real number. Well, 2 times a real number is a real number, therefore the result is finite. So here's a sum of non-negative terms that is finite Therefore, this series converges by the direct comparison test. Okay, and of course you can always think of this argument either as the comparison test or as the monotone convergence uh, theorem, right? You're summing non-negative terms, so as you sum more and more of these terms, the sum gets larger and larger and larger, so you have an increasing sequence of partial sums, and as the sequence is bounded above by a finite number, then the sequence of partial sums must converge by the monotone convergence theorem, which proves that the infinite series converges. So it's always up to you whether you quote the comparison test or the monotone convergence theorem. But now we have two interesting convergent series. This series converges by assumption, and because this series converges, this one converges by the comparison test. So let's see what we can do if we combine these two series. Let's take this series minus this series. This is a convergent series, which we have just proved. This is a convergent series by 
assumption. We assume that this series was convergent. So we are subtracting two convergent series. And we can now use our properties of convergent series, which says that if you subtract two convergent series, you can combine them as a single series by subtracting the corresponding terms. So this will be the unique series of a n plus the absolute value of a n minus the absolute value of a n. But this is nothing but zero for any n. And so you're left with the series of a n. And if you think about this, this is a convergent series, therefore nothing but a real number. This is another convergent series, therefore nothing but a real number. So if you do a real number minus a real number, you get a real number. Therefore the series of a n is a real number. Therefore, it must converge. And we're done. This was our desired conclusion to prove that the series of a n without the absolute value also converges. So if you see, the proof was very simple, but also kind of sneaky. We looked at this inequality to show that with the comparison test that the series of a n plus a n in absolute value converges and then by subtracting two convergent series from one another because this series was assumed to converge and using our well a property of convergent series we were able to show that the series of a n with that absolute value is a difference of two real numbers, therefore is a real number, therefore converges. And that's it. And so always remember the conclusion. If a series of the absolute value of a n converges, automatically you can drop the absolute value and the series of a n also converges. And that's it.